how much better do you feel on April 18th this year than last year? <laughs> Certainly a lot better. Um, it's been great to get off to a, a good start, and the team's playing awesome. So uh, we're in a good spot. You what look up at that get... board, and it's 395, Chase. Do you look up there a lot? Uh, I look up there a lot more than I did last year, I'll be <laughs> honest with you. But, no, it's uh, yeah, it's been a good start. Obviously, last year was really tough, um, and it contributed us to playing really poorly. So it's been nice to contribute, and uh, we got a lot of guys doing some good things. So what's the difference between this year and last? Well, I think, um, you know, mechanically, uh, especially left-handed, I'm in a much better place. Uh, I'm able to use my lower half a little bit, which... Um, you know, which is allowing me to see the ball a little bit better. I'm not in such a rush. Uh, and then, obviously, when you get some hits, you have a little bit more confidence. So, um, you know, I think those are the two big things. Now, it's interesting because uh, I look back at, you know, previous Aprils in your career, you've never been a great starter, and you didn't have a great spring training, but you came into the season. Listen, I don't want to repeat that. So did you work differently during the offseason so, to ensure that you wouldn't repeat that? No, no. I mean, I, I tried to have, uh, I always try to have, you know, a good focus in spring training and a good focus in my, my off-season workouts. Um, I just think that I, I had a better, um, you know, a, a, a better routine in spring training. Things that, you know, I was trying to accomplish last year uh, during spring training. I was, I was changing too many different things and, and thinking the wrong thoughts. And this year I came in and had a little bit, um, you know, better thought and better plan. And with the help of, uh, AC and Marcus, um, you know, we, we just narrowed it down and, and really did a couple drills, and I think that it's been, it's been paying off. Well, Chase, we don't know what this season is going to end up being. It's still, you know, very early. But you guys were staring one and five in the face at Camden Yards a couple of weeks ago before you even played a home game. You came back and you won that game, and you haven't lost since. Could you look at that as an early turn, turning point to this season, that game, that Sunday game at Camden Yards? Oh, there's no question. Um, you know, both uh, both the Friday night and the Saturday games, we had a chance to win. We were ahead late in the game, you know, and they come back and win both of those games. And then, uh, obviously, Gary Sanchez went down. I believe it was on that Saturday. Um, you know, that's a big piece. And, you know, we're down 3 nothing, maybe in the sixth or seventh inning on Sunday. And, uh, you know, we battled back. We, we scraped a couple runs across the board, and I think Aaron Judge hit a game-tying homer. But... Um, that was that. That showed me something. It showed that we weren't going to lay down. And then I think uh, we started to relax, and we've, we've been playing great since. All right, Our, Yankee. Fan, oh, sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. Yankee fans are very excited. They, I mean, they you know, your team wins eight in a row. You should be excited. But how real is this, Chase? Is this a team that believes that it's this good that it could be a 90 plus win team? Uh, there's a lot of belief on this club. I mean, everybody in here, um, you know, is, is very confident and, and um, you know, that's what it takes. I mean, we're, we're young. We have some, some young players, but they're very talented young players. And I think we got the right mix of, uh, of veteran guys to, to show them how to do things the right way and, and help them when things don't go the right way. But, um, yeah, we're young, but we're, we're very talented. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, Chase, about what the mentality is like for, for veterans in the locker room. I mean, there's so much made about the baby bombers and, oh, they're good. They're an improving team and blah, blah, blah. But obviously, you're 10 years into your career, and this is a, this is a moment, an opportunity for you. How do the veterans sort of view this team? Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's funny because, um, you know, we, we have such good young guys that there's not a ton that needs to be said or needs to be done, to be honest with you guys. These guys have a lot of... Um, a lot of respect for the game. They go about things the right way. They want to learn. They have respect for players that, you know, have been here longer than them. Um, but they also have the right feel of confidence, and they, they don't need to walk on eggshells. So as a veteran, you just want to go out there and be steady, you know, regardless of what happens. You know, don't let the ups and downs of the games um, really show because that's that translates to the young guys so you know i, I think just uh you know going about your business doing things the right way and not real, riding the roller coaster of emotion um you know is probably our our biggest job and and going out there and competing and do the best we can to help this club win what's the number one question you get asked by the kids <sighs> um the number one question i don't i don't know if i have a number one question but i think uh, a, a great question that uh, Greg Bird asked was, you know, what what is something early in your career that you would have changed, um, what you would have done differently? And, and I told him two things. I said, one, I would have enjoyed things a little bit more. I was so focused on trying to establish myself and be, um, you know, try to, to, to be a 
really good major league player that maybe I didn't enjoy the game as much as I should have. And two, uh, I didn't listen to my body enough. Uh, there were times where I went out and just played through things that um, – you know, I had no business playing through, and they, they ended up coming back and biting me a little bit later in my career. So, um, you know, those are the two things, just to, to, to learn your body, to understand it, to listen to it, but also to enjoy it because everybody uh, everybody in the world would love to switch places with you. All right, now, Chase, we're talking with Chase Headley, Yankee third baseman here on the Michael K Show. Fans get angry all the time. I scratch my head about it. Yesterday, after Bird gets three hits, he doesn't play. You're <laughs> red hot. You can't. They can't get you out. And you come in today, and you're not in the lineup. I mean, is is that a case of, like, you wanting to go to Joe's office and go, Joe, I want to play? Yeah, it, it, it's there's there's a happy medium. Joe told me a couple days ago that he wanted to give me um, today off. And uh, as a player, I want to play every day. That's the mentality I have. But I think, uh, you know, as as... As we've learned more about the body and about what's good for players, their rest is, is sometimes a good thing. So even though you don't really want it, you can't argue with the science and the fact that, um, you know, that the, the sports studies or the sports sciences, people that are studying this think that it's, that it's good to get off your feet some. So, you know, I don't really want to be out of the lineup, but if, uh, if they think that's what's best for both me and for the team, then, then I'm in. But, but isn't it better to get a rest off at 0 for 5? <laughs> no question, and an zero for five when you're facing Chris Sale or somebody right, like that. Right. But, uh, no, no question. Um, but you know what? They they have a plan and they have reasons that they do things. That's not my job to uh, to question those or to um, you know to to make those decisions. So I I just told them I said, hey, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to play. If you know, it's your decision from there. You know, we're seeing in other sports, Chase, that it just does not make any sense to play every single game. So it just sounds like Cal Ripken Jr.'s uh, record is going to be safe because it does sound like the way you're saying that there really isn't a lot of logic to playing 162 games. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I think that if, if you know, for most players, if you play them 162 games versus 150 games, uh, at the end of the year, your stats at 150 games are probably going to be better than they would be at 162 just because you have those those days to rest. So, um, you know, that's obviously not taking anything away from Cal Ripken Jr. I mean, that's, that's an unbelievable uh, – Record one that I don't think will ever even get close to being challenged, but um, but yeah, I mean that's that's where things are going. I mean, you look at the NBA and guys don't even dress anymore on days they're not playing. I mean, I know I'll be ready to go in the sixth or seventh inning today, so we're not quite there yet in baseball. Uh, you know, you're 0 for 11 with five strikeouts against Gonzalez. You think that that's why he planned this th- on this day? Maybe, maybe. I'm sure they. I know they look at those things. Um, you know, they they have a reason for it, so that might be part of the reason. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of times he'll tell me that even though it's a pitcher I haven't played great against, he wants me in there because, you know, Masahiro or CC's pitching that, you know, tends to get a lot of ground balls to third. So, you know, they have a reason for it. I try not to read into those things. I, I mean, I don't want to know if I haven't hit a guy well or not. I'm, I'm going to hit him well that day. That's my plan. So, um, you know, but I'm sure that plays into those decisions. All right, final thing, Chase. A lot of people, a lot of play, baseball players on Twitter, reacting angrily to uh, Starling Marte getting an 80-game suspension for PED use. Is, is there anything that would definitely stop this, Chase? Or, I mean, are people always going to try to get an advantage? Yeah, I think there's just the rewards uh, of performing at this level are so high that, that people are always looking for an advantage. And, uh, you know, I, I think baseball's done a tremendous job. Both the Players Association and M- MLB have done a great job in, in trying to make it as difficult as possible to get away with. But I just I just think with the rewards of, of performing at this level being so high that it's it's probably impossible to completely rid it of uh, of the game. Yeah, it's a hard one to because 80 games would seem like a lot, but again, if you get yourself a huge contract, I guess people are willing to take that chance. No question, and there's a lot of a lot of really smart people that are trying to do things that are undetectable, and and you know you you do it correctly, you're not supposed to be caught. So I mean, there's 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 a lot of people out there that are trying to beat the system, but you know all we can do is keep improving the system and uh, making the the punishments more more harsh, and and hopefully we'll we'll get as close to zero as we possibly can. Now, would you be open to a discussion of taking money away or limiting contracts or? forcing players that were caught with PEDs to make the minimum, taking money out of the pocket, if that's something that was addressed by Major League Baseball, do you think the players would go for something like that to finally rid PEDs? Because it doesn't seem like the suspensions are working. Well, 
I think that I, I would be open to that conversation for sure. I mean, the 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 classic horror story is somebody that that really unintentionally did something or somebody set them up or somebody put something in their food. I mean, that's, I know it's far fetched, but that's a, that would be a tough pill to swallow if, if you were a guy that really, you know, was not trying to do anything or, or, or didn't knowingly take something that could have something in it and you still fail a test. Um, you know, that's a tough pill to swallow. I don't think those guys should be handled the same way as, as guys that are, that are trying to do it. But, um, but I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm open for anything that makes this game, this, this game cleaner and better, um, you know, while still protecting the rights of the players that are trying to do things the right way. I'm like you, Chase. I worry about false positives. Imagine a guy losing all his money because of a false positive. That would be scary. Yeah, not just the not just the money. I mean, it's it's the it's the reputation. Yeah. It's the. I mean, I, I it scares me to death. I'm, I'm I I promise you, every single time I take one of these drug tests, I hold my breath, and it's not because I'm worried about anything that I I knowingly took. It, it just it's just scary. I mean, something you, you test positive and and your world changes, whether you meant to or not, or you did anything right or wrong, uh, your world changes. So it, it's it's nerve wracking, even though, even when you are doing things the right way. So. Um, yeah, the false positives definitely uh, definitely scare the players. Uh, Chase, I know you got nothing to do for six innings. If you want to come up to the S booth with me and Al, do the first six innings with us, you're more than welcome. <laughs> I'll, I'll check in with Joe and see if he's okay with that. <laughs> yeah.